vSphere 7.0 release, there will no longer be an option to deploy the external platform services controller. This means, customers with an external deployment needs change to embedded, before or during upgrade to vSphere 7.0. This lab session discussed how to update vCenter Server with an external platform service controller to vCenter Server 7 using a graphical user interface. This is a three-stage process. In the first stage, deploy the new vCenter Server with version 7. In the second stage, copy configuration and data from the old vCenter Server to the new vCenter Server. In the third stage, we need to decommission the external platform service controller. This is today lab setup. As a precaution in case of failure, you need to back up the vCenter and platform service controller before starting the upgrade. You must verify that the IP address of the vCenter has valid internal domain name registration. The temporary IP address is 192.168.1.25. Let's join with Screencast. Open the vCenter Server Installer and navigate to the vCSA UI Installer Directory. My jump server running on Windows, so go to the Win32 subdirectory, and run the installer.exe file. Once inside, click on Upgrade. Review the introduction page. Please take note of the warning for users with an external platform services controller. Read and accept the license agreement. Next, Insert the IP address of the Source vCenter appliance and click Connect to Source. Now, provide the information about the vCenter single sign on administrator and the root user. Additionally, enter details about the Source ESXi host or vCenter server instance. Verify the certificate warning and click Yes to accept the certificate thumbprints. Confirm the convergence of the vCenter server appliance and click Yes to proceed with the upgrade. Now, connect to the target server where you want to deploy the new vCenter server appliance. Enter the target ESXi IP address and root user password. Enter a name for the new vCenter server appliance and set the password for the root user. Select the deployment size. In this lab, we're choosing tiny with default storage size. Choose the location for storing virtual machine configuration files and disks. Optionally, enable thin provisioning. In Configure Network Setting page, insert Temporary Network Configurations. This temporary network for communication between the vCenter Server appliance that you want to upgrade and the new vCenter Server appliance. Please make sure this temporary IP address can communicate with vCenter IP address. Review the deployment settings and click Finish to start the OVA deployment process. Wait for the OVA deployment process to finish.
Then click Continue to proceed with Stage 2. Review the introduction to Stage 2 and click Next. Wait for the pre-upgrade check to finish. If the pre-upgrade check result contains error messages, you cannot proceed with the upgrade until you have corrected the errors. In this lab pre-upgrade check result contains warning messages. Read the messages and click close. After you have verified that your system meets the requirements from the warning message, you can proceed with the upgrade. In this page specify the replication topology for the vCenter server. When converging vCenter server instance with an external platform services controller you must specify the replication topology. In this lab, we're selecting, this is the first vCenter server. Choose the types of data you want to transfer from the old vCenter server appliance to the new one. In this lab, we're selecting option 1. Review the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program page and choose if you want to join the program. Review the upgrade settings, accept the backup acknowledgement, and click Finish. Read the shutdown warning message and click OK. Wait for the data transfer and setup process to finish. After the upgrade is complete, you will receive a notification that you can no longer use the external platform service controller, and you will need to decommission it. Read the messages and click Close to continue. Congratulations! The vCenter server appliance is now upgraded. Log in to the ESXi host and verify that the newly deployed vCenter server is powered on and running. Additionally, you will notice that the old vCenter server is powered off, but the old external platform service controller is still running. Access the new vCenter server using a single sign-on user. And you will see that the vCenter server has been upgraded from version 6.7 to 7. Go to the Administrator and Access System configuration. You will notice the previous external platform service controller is still attached. Now, you need to decommission the previous external platform service controller. For this, you can follow VMware Knowledge Base Article Number 75177. You can find the link in the description below. First, copy the command from the article to Notepad and edit the command with the Platform Service Controller FQDN single sign on username and vcenter single sign on password next save this information and power off the currently running platform service controller from the vcenter server Then, take a snapshot of the new vCenter server. 
This is an important step to ensure you have a backup in case anything goes wrong. Now, let's proceed by logging into the vCenter server appliance using PuTTY. But before we do that, we need to enable SSH on the vCenter server. Once SSH is enabled, you can access the vCenter using PuTTY. Simply enter the IP address or FQDN, and then log in with your credentials. Now, let's run the command we prepared earlier. Just paste it into the console and hit enter. It will take some time to complete. After the process completes, your vCenter server is now ready to use. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more helpful tutorials. Don't forget to check the description for the link to the VMware Knowledge Base article. See you in the next video.